Hi. Uh, first of all, thanks for the introduction. Um, so, uh, I'm Anish from New Delhi office, and I'm going to present on the topic Reconnect, exploring possibilities of a better connected workplace. So it's not been long since I've been have joined Populous, and it's been very exciting and wonderful in terms of the work exposure, and you know, of course, getting to interact and learn from the immensely talented uh, pool of people available globally. So I, I believe the greatest strength of the organization like ours is the presence of diverse set of people and, and with different cultural and geographical backgrounds and the varied set of skills and knowledge that we possess. Soon I was kind of drawn into knowing more about the organization, the people, the projects, and kind of the culture. Not to forget, of course, the initiatives happening all around. So uh, being a global organization spread wide across the globe comes with the challenge of having a well-connected network between the offices. To say, from the perspective of a remote office like ours, we are well-connected with the Brisbane office, the Sydney office, the Singapore office, the regional offices, basically, uh, through the series of staff mails and then, and of course, the regional meets that we have once in a month. But we, don't, we are really unaware of the projects and other kind of um, uh, ongoings happening on the other side of the globe. So that kind of got us thinking. Can we create a system that uh, connects us in a way that we kind of sort, uh, sort of form this global community that is engaged in exchanging ideas, resources, and values in a more seamless and efficient way? So we kind of decided to step in and explore a bit. So we all know the benefits of uh, sharing. We need to stay connected to learn from each other, of course, and share our experiences and kind of inspire one another and stay informed about our uh, ongoings and, of course, transform into a next level and, of course, adding up to be more efficient and kind of productive. So uh, we have the goal right in front of us. It's, it's, it's more of uh, let's try and making, make the world a smaller place by better connectivity and by still making use of all the cultural and geographical background to our advantage. So I see connectivity having three components to it, mainly being the process, people, and the technology. The process is how we decide and moderate our range of connectivity between people, mostly being the policies, the protocols, and types of employee engagement initiatives or the channels that we kind of introduce. Secondly, the people who are part of the network and of course are part of, are part of the engagement. And third, the technology which we facilitate and incorporate the processes we set for ourselves. So we started looking at the existing processes you know, that we have, going from Global Design Council, the Pi Conference, the Pop Exchange, regional staff meets that we have once in a month. And they, they work really well for the purpose it's meant to fulfill. And of course, I'm a big fan of the Global Design Reviews because it kind of reminds me about my college time when juries used to happen. And I'm really happy for the fact that uh, learning still continues even after graduation. But what about the constant project updates and other accomplishments that keep happening around the globe? Is there a way we can keep all of us well informed about the latest news and updates happening at, at different parts of the world? So that is exactly when I came across this, uh, this uh, survey conducted by the Newsweaver Communication. The survey roughly suggests that the emails are still believed as the best form of communication as almost 90% of the people access mail on a daily basis as compared to the 30% who visit corporate social platform on a daily basis. So mails are something that we are accustomed to open every day. What are the possibilities of introducing a protocol to exchange global updates frequently through all staff mails across region updating each other about the latest advances and uh, of course the new hires that are coming into the organization and of course, all the initiatives and the success stories that are happening around the globe. I, th I believe we would be a step closer. What are the possibilities of creating exchange programs that a lot of organizations have adopted in recent times? It would mean sending uh, interested people across, across regions for a specific period of time, getting them to feel the other office, their, the culture, the work practice, and of course the, the people, and then further come back to their home office and kind of share their experience. So further, we set out to explore new, new mediums of exchanging stories, which brings us to something which we at the New Delhi office are actually working on uh, and intend to circulate in the APAC region soon. It's a, it's a digital newsletter. 
we intend um, so it's it's going to be a quarterly issue that's going to be sent out uh, to other offices uh, so that we can inform uh, about our advances in the offices so they are to contain all sort of information like our celebrations how we are celebrating in our office the key findings of the projects and then the uh, the projects itself uh, about different various kind of stuff and and of course video blogs to make it more immersive and dynamic so we kind of uh, intend to keep the format very simple with more of ima images and moving videos so that it's more immersive and and less of text in in a way to increase the part people's participation basically which uh, kind of brings me to the next important factor which are which is people itself we as a part of the connection the network so uh so uh we can have all these kind of initiatives and uh, and kind of protocols but uh, it, the all the, the success kind of lies on one important factor being the participation uh, i came across this article uh, published in the harvard Re uh, business review in uh, which actually mentions a couple of reasons why most corporate social networks fail uh, also seeing a maximum user engagement of um, around 36% in all the uh, corporate network platforms and um, uh, one of the major factor being a uh, being lack of participation from the leadership itself so it's it's like if the dealers don't believe it, we don't believe so uh, as part of uh, making the newsletter we ourselves uh, kind of understood some of the design principles to achieve maximum participation and engagement it's best to keep minimum text maximum images videos even better to make the content more dynamic and immersive the platform should be easy and intuitive to use more interactive so as to exchange comments and feedbacks and of course have a mix of content more serious and humorous so that uh, people are comfortable posting their views so, uh, all these attempts are in a way to make it more seamless and effortless for people to in a kind of you know uh, 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 engage with the content that we are producing that kind of brings us to the next component of connectivity which is technology itself so we all know uh, technology technology has the power to create new methodologies in fact technology can bring up new possibilities and and processes that we exp uh, that we have already explored and create new ways of engaging people so uh, in order to understand technology we kind of uh, started just moving in and trying to understand what the real role of technology is in in connectivity it's like we are trying to connect to people uh, they are separated by a geographical distance between them and there is a medium right there for us to connect and the medium is basically the technology that we use and if 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 we possibly could add more senses to the medium and make it kind of more immersive the lesser we feel the medium and the more connected we are and more seamless it is if we are looking at connecting people across the organization in the purest of form embracing the human relationship we need to uh, create make the medium more immersive and of course the interaction between the people and the medium more seamless how do we do that so we decided to look at the new wave of industries and learn from their extensive efforts in handling technology to achieve groundbreaking and disruptive services so uber considered one of the most innovative companies has completely changed the way we imagine cab rides how did uber make this experience so intuitive and and seamless so if we actually look closer it's it's a simple uh, kind of a thing that they have done and it's it's very i mean known to all so they have they have combined all kind of uh, pre-existing technologies kind of to make a new technology which is kind of disruptive as in they combined all the different set of uh, technologies like gps the maps and the push notifications the payment integration in a way no other companies actually thought of creating and um, and uh, and uber did it basically the experience is so seamless and effortless that one can't imagine going back to the conventional f way of hailing a cab so it's not the technology that is disruptive but the way we com they combined it together so can we hence combine technology to create a system that helps us connect in a more immersive and seamless way or is there a hard and fast rule to it in combining these different technologies so uh, google and apple these markets are the best ex examples for this so um, google uh, app store contains now 2.8 million apps and app store contains around 2.2 million of them 
and these these uh, this market is basically open to all these independent app developers who come up with different innovative ways of combining technologies and the sensors that are existing within our, our phones itself. So for example, the same set of GPS, gyro, and the Axtro uh, you know, sensors can be used to make a cool app of, uh, of this sort, like a spyglass with a compass on it, or even make a game which um, kind of we need to balance the phone and take, uh, take the hole to the designated, uh, sorry, take the ball to the designated hole. So it's basically what I'm trying to say is the same set of technologies that can be used in different ways to create different things. So just to see in uh, context, so there is a school app called Portal, which uh, one of the developers has developed to make it seamless um, uh, to transfer a file from your phone uh, to, a, to a PC without actually needing a cable or setting up a Bluetooth connectivity. So you can just imagine how, how, uh, easy, how like, cool it would be just to transfer files from one PC to another by, uh, by making it as simple as just dragging a file from one screen to another. So yeah, that kind of uh, reminds me about the sci-fi movies that we all uh, love to watch. And most of us have, have actually wished to be in living and, and kind of working in that kind of environment with all these holograms and, and kind of uh, things happening in, in, uh, over a voice command. I've always considered these movies citing the best examples of seamless and immersive connectivity. These are intended to be the technology of the future, but if we actually look at the current advances of this age, the technology exists right now, and it's just a matter of adopting and creating sort of systems that connect us better and make our work more productive and efficient. Early applications of VR started off with these games like uh, the one over here, the Belco experiment, where a person is kind of trapped in a room and they need to find clues and, and escape the room bef within 15 minutes before it gets detonated. So I had a chance to play this, and it was very real and intense. And it was like an experience like no other uh, technology. Uh, fast forward, Microsoft uh, came up with the HoloLens in 2015. It's a very neat set of um, head-mounted gear that allows you to see and interact with the projected uh, digital interface in the real world, uh, capturing, of course, imaginations of many. So can we use something like this to kind of create a hot desk concept, basically? It, the, your desk is where, wherever you sit. So. We, we can well uh, go with something like that. Uh, fast forward again, we have Facebook, uh, who have actually adopted VR and AR together. They have mixed it together and created more like a, a mixed reality, and uh, where where people are in form of avatars in this uh, virtual scenarios. And he showcased how his friends could actually come on stage from different part, sitting from different parts of the world, and also join the conference. And they have taken trips into the ocean depths and all, also uh, even they have even gone to the Mars uh, while having the conversation, kind of reflecting on the kind of superior connectivity we achieve with these technologies. This kind of also reminds me what about having a, a kind of a Pop Friday kind of a thing with all the global offices coming under one virtual roof and kind of having conversations and celebrating moments. Uh, what about working in uh, in the virtual space? So this is a, a tilt brush uh, uh, developed by Google, which lets one uh, uh, sketch in 3D in the virtual space. So also Revit has also uh, developed this live editing software where they can edit it in real time in the model and kind of view it through VR and stuff. So I'm imagining kind of a system where uh, we, like a virtual workshop where we don't have to fly in people, but rather just tune into this virtual space and people are inside this building directly and discussing all the MAP related sh issues or the details um, depending on, on the various uh, kind of platform. And of course, the scale of the human can even change. Uh, we can be small when we're discussing the details and we can as big as this guy uh, while we are discussing the form related issues. Uh, sensation. So this is um, Oculus Touch. So this kind of uh, helps you pick up objects in the VR world, and it lets you feel the VR world. Further down, we have a feel real mask, which has a water mist generator. Uh, it has a water generator, basically. You put it on your face, and it mimics the environment that you're seeing through the VR, like kind of increasing that <laughs> immersiveness. So we have a ping pong table back 
uh, in their Delhi office, and uh, real conversations happen over a game of ping pong. <laughs> so uh, soon, uh, maybe we can have a match with the colleagues, say, uh, sitting in Kansas' office, and uh, you know, it it kind of gives a better picture of the person uh, rather than you know uh, having a connection and connection through a through a mail or even having a video call. We can just maybe have a chat over a game of <laughs> ping pong. So uh, this is teleportation, which is which is like a reality now. There is a series of cameras that map the whole structure of your body and project it in the augmented reality headset of the other person. This was actually best demonstrated in a TED talk where he could actually invite another friend of his from a different part of the world and they were uh, together hosting the show. So what about creating seamless and effortless experience? Internet of Things is the future of smart and seamless connectivity. The internet we had built for people are also used by everyday objects. They transmit um, useful data to each other, helping them take better and useful decisions. Best example for this is how the room, tempera room, reader, room temperature reader transmits the data to the thermostat and kind of sets pr a perfect temperature, saving a lot of money uh, and energy, of course. <laughs> So by the end of this year, there will be 4.9 billion uh, things added into the internet and uh, transmitting useful information uh, within each other and making everything more efficient and seamless. So the next time, maybe uh, when I have a meeting, I don't have to go to the conference room and set up the cameras and stuff, but rather my calendar would have already communicated uh, to the room and uh, the cameras are on already and the links are already set up as I just walk in moments before the meeting, saving up a lot of time and of course making me more efficient and productive. So uh, the last one is the data analytics. Basically at this age, uh, in age of information, data is the raw material and the systems have evolved to analyze, and uh, analyze the data using algorithms to provide productive insights. So, for example, this is NAC. So it kind of uh, it kind of tells if you have a NAC for a certain thing. So uh, these are currently used by organizations to understand one's strength and weaknesses, so as to assign them the right set of tasks. Imagine such an integrated system that would predict the best team for the project based on their skill, uh, their availability, other parameters like costing and all that. Further, letting people interact and find new method of connectivity. The possibilities are just endless with all, all kind of set of these technologies. So I would like to conclude uh, by saying that uh, we as the global front runners in the market should look out for these technologies and of course uh, and work on it and adopt and develop these further uh, to create a better connected workplace and to form a global community, uh, global uh, community, yeah, thank you.